welcome to March. February is finally over, which is awesome. I always say it has the shortest amount of days because it sucks the most. Did you know more people kill themselves in the month of February than any other month, which is why, thank goodness, it's the shortest month, but then also why I felt it was super important in March to have this reading center around our happiness, okay? So there are a lot of reasons why people watch these videos, but at the very core of it, I think that people are watching because they want some good news, right? They want something to look forward to. In the uh, words of Omar Suleiman, a very wise guy, he says that the keys to happiness are three things. Something to love, something to do, and something to look forward to. So hopefully, I'm gonna give you all of those in this reading. So, um, even if your life is already full of joy and happiness and bliss, if you're just wanting to hear some validation about these good vibes that you're already feeling, that you know, to hear you're already on the right path, that you're making the right choices, the right decisions for that sense of security, security does bring happiness, right? Knowing what to expect. At the end of the day, happiness is what we're all seeking. It's the reason why we seek out help, why we would use a tarot reader, why we would look up our horoscope. This is why we're doing this, okay? We are fiends for happiness. It's the ultimate drug and so this is what we're focusing on in uh, March so this will be for your Sun moon or rising sign uh, a lot of times because of our moon sign correlates to our emotions and how we feel which is a lot of times why we make the decisions we make that might resonate a little bit better for you so um, it might be advisable to watch your moon sign as well as your Sun sign and then you could do your rising sign as well too if you'd like to um, what did I want to say okay so since we're focusing on happiness for March and how to kind of sustain that throughout the year this is how we're gonna look at it we're gonna do um, where are you at right now what is tainting any feelings of happiness that you otherwise should have right now what will make you feel happy or at least what you think will um, how is that perception true how is that perception false um, what will actually make you the most happy this month and then we're gonna look at the forces that are kind of outside of your control right, that is affecting this state, and um, which ones that are not really within your power are kind of accelerating your happiness, and then which ones are decelerating that. Um, we're going to look at what's going to bring you luck this month, your crystal of the month, your color energy, your lucky days, and then also any energies that you need to kind of bring into your life in order to help the happiness thrive, how to sustain the happiness once you get some, and then just kind of like a recap or overall nutshell of what March will look like for your sign. So um, kind of thinking about, you know, okay, well, is this reading going to be enough because it's for each specific zodiac sign, each sign has their own. Then I was thinking, um, those of you who have followed me for a long time might remember stop, drop, roll readings, uh, where it's something that you stop doing, something you drop from your life, and something you should roll with. I think I'm going to do a special on those, but um, really kind of amped up or accelerated in order to um, really harness in on that happiness sort of life coaching aspect. And the reason why I think this is important in March is because number one, it's the perfect time for spring cleaning, right? Uh, number two, the popularity of Marie Kondo right now and, you know, sort of thinking about let's get rid of the things that don't bring me joy. Let's just focus on the things that bring me joy and, you know, we all are always looking for joy. We're either trying to increase pleasure or decrease pain. And so that's kind of the purpose of this reading. And then here's the other thing. We're about to step into this Mercury retrograde. We're in the pre-shadow period right now as I record this. And so then when it hits us, um, in order to use this time in its fullest potential, we want to very much evaluate, okay, this isn't working for me. I wanna pitch this and I wanna do something that's gonna make my life better. It's gonna make me happier. It's gonna make me more joyful, more satisfied with life. And so um, I think I'm going to offer that like in sort of a goals and coaching, very intensive sort of way as a special. Um, once I decide to do that, if you're on the email list, um, I only send one email a month, so don't let that be a reason why you're not on my list. Um, then 
you'll be notified of that. And if there's like a coupon code or something that would be in there, uh, if you're not on the list, you should be because I give away, like I said, it's only one email a month, but I, every single month I give away a free 20 minute, um, video reading to uh, a random person selected from my list. So that being said, um, I'm sorry if this long intro did not bring you joy, if it decreased your happiness, but now you know what to expect in your reading. So let's get started. Hey Sagittarius, welcome to March. Um, right before I hit record on your video, I had that baby shark song stuck in my head and I don't know why, because that is not um, a song I would frequently listen to. So, if that's your jam, this reading might be particularly intense for you. <laughs> anyway, okay, so we're just going to get right into it. Where are you at right now, baby sharks, Sagittarius? This is real, oh, the letter S is like super big. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, and that's not what the cards say, but there's, I think that's why they're like baby shark, doot doot, because shark is like starting with an S, Sagittarius. Your power color of the month is Sapphire. There's all this S energy. So I'm actually going to take a little detour from our um, scheduled reading and see what that's about. Because that might be a very specific message for somebody. And they're like, um, if your name starts with S, like if it's Seraphim, which I think is the name of an angel. You might want to look that up if your name doesn't start with S. Um, or Sarah, or Susan, or Sonia, or Stanley, or Stuart. Um, it's particularly important that you find a way to um, really embrace who you are and feel a lot of love and joy for that person. Like being totally confident, okay? So anyway, maybe as we do the reading that is for everyone, um, that'll make more sense as to why for you specifically, but somebody with an S name, maybe your name is Sapphire or Shark. <laughs> I hope it's not Shark. Okay, so anyway, where you're at right now. Um, so uh, some things have ended and then there's like new beginnings about to come from those things. You might not necessarily notice what those are yet, but you're hopeful. Maybe you're like laying the groundwork, um, starting down a new path. There's either a change in mindset or a change in like, a job or a relationship, something like that. But this is all for the better. And it's going to actually make you feel a lot lighter. Um, kind of like just letting go of things and releasing them is going to bring a lot of joy and happiness to your life. Because before you were in this place where you had to stand there and think about, oh man, is this worth it? Like, is this really the path I want to go down? Is this is going to be challenging? And like, do I have the strength and the energy for that? And now that's in reverse. And they're like, I don't even have to sit there and think about it because I'm too focused on having joy. Because you know what? I did the right thing, even though it was hard. And I said, okay, done with that. And so now I am being rewarded for that. And so not everybody gets to feel so joyous in a Mercury retrograde, but you do because it's like you read ahead. Like you kind of, um, like, you have your reading assignment in school, right? You have your homework, and you worked ahead. Like, you read all of the chapters before the teacher presented them to you in a lecture class. So you knew where you were going, and it was much easier for you now in the retrograde than it is for everybody else. So congrats. Okay. What's tainting any feelings of joy or happiness that you have right now in the month of March? And they're saying, like, just kind of the slowness of things, having to wait for um, investments that you might have made to pay off. So that could be like an actual financial investment. Maybe you just opened up a stock portfolio and you're putting away money, you know, into a mutual fund and it's not doing anything. And you're like, I've been putting money in here for six months and it's just like the same. <laughs> that might be bugging you. Or maybe um, you took a course or a training, and so you're waiting and waiting and waiting for this promotion to show up that you thought you were going to get because it gave you, you know, some sort of a lead or advantage over your colleagues, and you're still just sitting there waiting. Or maybe you put a lot into a relationship, and then now you're just sitting back and waiting. But they're saying, like, there's really nothing that you can do right now to change that, and so, you know, don't worry about it. Everything's going to happen in the right time in the right way. So it is what it is. Don't let that bum you out. You can choose to be upset about it, but choosing to be upset about it doesn't actually give you this magical miracle cure solution where you can do something to change the speed. You can't. It's out of your control. So, okay. 
what do you think is going to make you happier in the month of March? And they're saying having control, <laughs> but then simultaneously, it's like kind of a, it's a very strange energy where it's like this optimism and youthful kind of like anything is possible energy and everything's going to be okay, but then controlling the things that you can simultaneously. It's not like, oh, um, out of desperation and things I don't like, I need to completely and very meticulously control the environment and like everybody around me and like everything around me. It's not like that. It's like I am in control and part of being in control means that I'm optimistic and trusting in the universe that everything happens in the divine right time in the right way for the right reason. And so they're saying, um, here comes a weird number message, but they're like, you know, um, with any sort of disappointing five energy, like any sort of energy of disappointment, hardship, despair, argument, chaos, they're like, for a minute, that expanded, but then only in order for you to release it and to say, okay, out with that, I'm moving to something better, and this is how you controlled the situation by way of your optimism to give you the fuel. So like, a good, this is the weirdest analogy, and it might not even make sense because I haven't even processed it in my head yet. They're just like doing all of these like data dumps right now because I channel when I read. And so it's like, anyway. Um, oh, this, uh, before I go there, I just want to show you it, this thing covering his head is the same as your power color. And the thing covering his head is the same as your power color. So it's like the spirit world, because they pointed that out to me right now. <laughs> the spirit world is like really working on healing you and giving you a lot of communication that is clear, clear cognizant. So some people like get messages through song or um, they overhear specific things um, in other people's conversations or, you know, some people have visions or dreams. Some people feel a certain way in their body and that's how they know, you know, they're on the right path or they're not. Um, but for you this month, it's just like you have this inherent knowing and um, I would call it intuition except for it's less human than that. It's less of like a sentient feeling, a fe like something that you actually feel. It's just like, oh, I know this without a feeling attached to it. It's just like, like a data drop, like I just got in my head there. Okay, so going back to, what were they telling me? Oh, okay, so see, isn't that cool? You can ask them. You can be like, hey, what, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and they put it right back. <laughs> When it's not your thought, they can replace it very quickly. Okay, so anyway, the di it's hard to understand how you're simultaneously like, oh, I don't need to be in control. I um, am completely surrendering to the universe, knowing that it's benevolent and it's awesome and it's going to give me what I need. I trust the universe. But then also being like dominating, like, oh, I've totally got control of everything in my life. Like, how does that make sense? So here's the way that they're explaining it. They're saying that... You are a car, okay? You went and you bought a car to get you somewhere, but then your faith in the universe is the fuel that moves it, okay? So you take the steps that you need to take, and then the universe propels you down the path. So it's kind of like that concept of co-creation. That would have been an easier way for them just to um, express that. They could have said, hey, tell them they need to co-create their futures. <laughs> But they did it this way. So it is what it is. Okay. Um, so anyway, what is it that you think will make you happy? Yeah. Um, it is buying the car and then having faith that it'll work. Okay. Controlling what you can control and then relying on the universe for the things outside of your control. Having total faith that the decisions that you're making now are the right ones for you. Um, then... Also, they're saying that um, it's going to be challenging for a lot of you to show yourselves enough self-care. It's almost as though you're in this energy in um, as you're trying to co-create things of pushing yourself a little bit too hard um, and maybe sacrificing. So, you know, you might say, okay, I have this goal that I want to reach by a certain amount of time because I know after that it should be smooth sailing. So you work yourself to the bone 80 hours a week over the course of three weeks um, to achieve that, to just like kind of set things on autopilot because you know that the universe will take over and, and handle that for you. But what they're saying is um, 
that's actually not the case. It's better if it takes six weeks and then you slow it down a little, okay? Because that's not good for you. Okay, so I mean that kind of covers how your perception is true of what's going to work for you and then also what isn't. Um, okay, so what's actually going to make you the most happy in March? And they're saying that um, you have nothing that you need to defend yourself against at all. Like, you are very much owning who you are unapologetically. You know, if somebody came and they attacked you, you'd be like, yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. And I feel okay about that. I made that decision on purpose. Okay, but you called me an asshole and you're so rude. Yeah, I made that choice because you are an asshole and I don't want to talk to you, right? Or whatever, whatever the case may be. They're like, historically, this might have hurt you. It might have lowered your confidence. You might not have felt very good. But you're kind of in this energy of like full control and knowing who you are and feeling good about it. Now, some of you still have some work to do there. But for the most part, a lot of you have really developed and evolved over the recent however long, four years, I think. They're saying, they're saying it's different for everybody. But the average is four years. Over the last four years, a lot of Sagittarians have made big strides and um, become like very unapologetically who they are and very authentic. And so not to saying you were not to say you weren't before, but you're so much there now and you feel good about it. They're like, so, you know, you're simultaneously super honest, but at the same time vulnerable. And so you're naturally likable. You know, like you're not going to allow someone to sit here and attack you and attack you and attack you. Um, but like at the same time, you're so, I mean, what is it that they say? Like turning the other cheek is maybe an expression. So it's not that when somebody hits you here, you turn the other cheek so they can hit you in the other cheek. It's more like, I just turned my ass all the way around. I'm not going to engage in this ridiculous behavior with you because that makes me look like you. That lowers me to your level kind of a thing. So you've learned a lot and you've matured a lot and you are um, very authentically who you are. Um, they say like, if there is any sort of confrontational energy for you this month, you will be able to win those battles verbally and mentally. Um... Whereas like other people, because they're not patient and confident enough, will just lash out completely the wrong way. Um, they're saying like, you're really cautious to not harm yourself or your arguments or um, your own agenda, especially this month. But they go, you know, I honestly, this month is maybe not the most exciting month to deal with other people, especially people who are not, um, you know, on our favorites list. But you're handling everything the right way, that justice will be served, karma um, will come to full fruition. And so they're saying, and like, you know that, so you're just focusing on yourself and you're focusing on doing the right thing for you at all times and that's fantastic. So, um, forces outside of your control that are in favor of your happiness in March. And they're saying, um, so getting enough sleep and rest is going to be somewhat challenging, but when you can find it, that is going to lift your spirits massively, like more than it usually would to be well rested. It also helps you to manifest the things that you want and to attract bigger blessings than you even realized you were manifesting because your subconscious is doing it, and then even bigger than you thought you had the power to draw into your life. So that's fantastic. Maybe you wanted to um, get some sort of a raise, right, or a bonus at work. You're in sales, and you're shooting for, you know, a $5,000 bonus this month, and then, like, you completely blow your own mind that you got, you doubled that. Like, wouldn't that be amazing? So it's that kind of a thing. You didn't even know it was possible, but you manifested it. Now, how is your perception, uh, or I'm sorry, what forces are outside of your control working against your happiness this month? And they go, well, people are not as loving to you as maybe they should be. Not everybody is saying or doing the right thing or acting in the most loving way, which we already know because it looked like there might have been a conflict with somebody else this month. But, I mean, honestly, you're kind of going, okay, well, I'm just going to put that in my memory bank. Um, you know, you were an asshole this time. <laughs> and then if those behaviors kind of continue, you know that this is a person you want to cut out of your life or not deal with basically, is you're kind of just like sitting here 
I see you like a sexy librarian, right? Where you're very silently but gracefully um, looking cute while you do it, taking your experiences and filing them away on bookshelves. And then later you can go back and you can go, hmm, this seems pretty typical. Yep, I'm just going to throw this one out. <laughs> so good, good for you. Um, what's going to bring you luck this month? So as we talked about, your power color energy is sapphire. If you have a sapphire stone or necklace, if you like to wear this color, that would be good. The energy of this is um, an 11. So it's about getting the things that you want. And so this one says regenerating your body. And so like I said, with that whole sleep energy, like um, when you get enough rest, you are going to feel absolutely much more happy and much more um, excited and joyful on the day-to-day -day level. So with this one, um, as you're sleeping, you know, our angels, our spirit guides, whatever, they work on us. And they kind of cleanse our energy and they recharge it for us. They help us to work through anything that's kind of stagnant or stuck. So this one, when we come to um, like our wakeful moments it helps us to be like kind of cool calm reserved in the ways that we need to be um it correlates to the throat chakra which totally makes sense because this is the energy that we're embracing when we do experience conflict with other people this month um it gets rid of our nerves it like totally calms us out it dissolves any sort of like um blocked pathways in our life it creates more harmony and balance for us what else does it do Helps us to balance our emotion. Just creates like a lot of order in your life. And creating order is an interesting way to think about this for me because I was like, okay, here's what I'm doing. I'm observing the way that other people treat me, the way that other people behave or act, and I'm just filing that orderly onto shelves and I'm going, noted, and I'll do something with that later. I'll refer to that later when the time comes and I need to. Brilliant. And so I guess that might make you sound a little bit... Um, conniving, but it isn't. It's just really, um, it's a very intellectually responsible way to handle emotions. Like you're not being impulsive, which as a fire sign is sometimes a challenge to not be impulsive. Okay. Gosh, I love you. You're the best. <laughs> um, your lucky day of the month is the 11th, which doesn't surprise me. Because you have all this energy here with the star card, um, which I actually call the hope card because everything we hope for. Um, plus, our sapphire energy is a 3 plus an 8 is 11. Plus, your lucky day is the 11th. So I would be thinking about all these things that I want, all these things that I wish or hope for, because it seems to me that this is the month where things start kind of rolling in your favor. Like I said, unexpected things like you didn't even know were possible are easily going to flow to you if you're really embracing the right energies this month. So your crystal of the month is hematite. And this is actually, when people ask me what my favorite stone is, most often, because I guess it kind of does change from time to time, but most of the time this is my what I say. I love hematite. I love the way it feels. It's like really heavy and I just love everything it does. This is like, ugh, it's my favorite. Anyway, um, so hematite is used for grounding, okay? It's also used for safety. I never drive in a vehicle without one. So even if I get into somebody else's car, if I get into an Uber or Lyft, I have one in my wallet, I have one in my pocket, I probably have one in my bra. <laughs> I always have a hematite. Um, it makes you feel really courageous. It'll take any energy that you have that is heavy and it just like thunks that right into the ground. The awesome thing about this um, from like a physiological standpoint is it increases your ability to like, so I'm anemic, right? And so it increases your red blood cells or like at least the um, heme components there, the hemoglobin, so that you can hold oxygen. So you feel more awake. You feel more alive when you have a hematite on you, that kind of thing. Um, gets rid of, it makes it, what did I say? Did I say we, like we're more brave and courageous? Um, it increases our physical strength, our emotional strength, protects us, increases our optimism, which is good. So these crystals are like really magnetic. So you might, if you buy them in like a bead form, they stick together. And so why is that important? Because it's actually making you a magnet. People don't think about this when it comes to abundance, but it makes you like a magnet for the right things. But then, you know, conversely, when 
things are wrong for you, you'll be able to repel them. Like when you put two ends of um, magnets together that don't go together, they go whoop and they repel each other, right? So like things that are right for you, you can suck them in. Things that are wrong for you, you can push them away with um, hematite. So why am I holding so many of these? I know it's bonkers. Uh, because personally, these little baby guys are my favorite because I can throw them anywhere. I put them on top of like door frames in front of windows. I sprinkle them all over the car. <laughs> I bury them in my yard because they're tiny and they're easy and I can put one in my wallet and I can put one in my ear. Like you can put them anywhere. I wouldn't put it in your ear though. That's not good advice. Um, and then it also can look like this sometimes. This is just a bigger version. It's kind of like a dark gray, like a shiny. And then when it comes in raw form and it's not tumbled, this is what it looks like. Okay? It kind of looks like a meteorite or something. It's all lumpy and stuff. But it's just kind of naturally shiny on its own. So anyway, I just wanted you to see the different forms it comes in. In case you go to a crystal store or something locally to pick one up, then you know what you're looking for. If you don't have something like that near you, you can order one from my website. And it comes with like a... Um, like a video playlist on different ways you can use crystals and things like that, as well as more details on the things that it does, which angels associate to it, how to care for your crystal, um, when to use it, when not to use it. Like, for example, a lot of people don't know if you have, like, an area of your body right now that's inflamed, that you have, like, inflammation going on. Maybe you're, like, having, like, an arthritis episode. Don't use it because it's going to make it worse. Stuff like that. Okay, back to the reading. So... What kind of energies do you need to bring into your life to help happiness thrive? And they go, that energy of assessing, is this worth it or not? I know what the challenges are. And I'm kind of thinking, come the new moon, I might want to start planning for that or, you know, going down that path. But is it what I really want? Is it worth it? And then actually talking this through with somebody. And so you're going to be talking this through electronically, not face-to-face. -face. So this is like... um sending emails or asking questions on a forum or researching or um, texting your best friend or talking on the phone or by FaceTime, but this is not a face-to-face -face conversation. And so kind of talking through the pros and cons with somebody else. Um, how can we sustain this happiness and joyful energy once we get some? Like, how do we keep it around? And they go, well, the... <laughs> Okay, so this is funny because I'm in like an argument right now with spirit guides of the Sagittarian clan um, because I'm like, oh, you're so annoying when you talk like that. And they're like, oh, you're so annoying when you ask these stupid questions. Basically, they're like, um, you cannot forever sustain happiness generally. Like we can raise our baseline of happiness you know, we're in which we kind of up and down from there. You know, sometimes our baseline is down here. Sometimes it's up here. We can we can elevate our baseline. But they're like, you can't just like stay joyful forever. Who are you kidding? <laughs> I'm like, rude. Um, but anyway, they're saying that for a lot of you, a good way to do that is to be open to change. That once you kind of are really feeling and embracing this happiness energy – we might not want to change what we're doing at all because we think if we don't change things, then things stay the same. And so, you know, we're likely to not run into problems, but then we run into the problem of boredom. And so they say be open to new opportunities because they're exciting and they're worth it. I love that. So March overall in a nutshell for you is they're like, we're going to be wondering, is this fair? Is that fair? I don't really know. And um, for those of us who have bad karma, like, not from past lives, from this current life. If you fucked up and you did something shitty to somebody else, guess what? You're about to pay for it. If you have been, like, a super loving and caring individual, guess what? You're about to be rewarded big. So I'm not saying that to scare those of you who fucked up. But I am saying that to remind those of you who are doing the best that they can that good things are coming. And so they're saying, like, this is not probably going to happen in your love life or relationships because there are certain lessons and things that we needed to learn there. And actually some of the things that we're doing or the way that we're thinking about things in our relationships or, like, in our historical relationships because we're in a Mercury retrograde are not healthy for us at all. 
Like a lot of the pain that we might feel or the apathy that we might feel that creates pain for us is our own fucking fault. Like, because we're deciding to continue to think about things in a certain way and not changing the way that we think about things or to focus on, you know, different things that we want to focus on that aren't necessarily the right thing for us to focus on in these types of relationships. And so it's saying that um, we don't actually want you to do anything about this right now. (laughs) We just want you to like kind of grasp like a fuller awareness of like what those patterns are, what your thought processes are that are not healthy in um, regards to dealing with other people or like when you see injustice or like oppression, like when you see something that's wrong, like how do you deal with that? Or like if you're tempted to do something wrong, like how do you talk yourself down from that or are you impulsive in that regard? And they're like, so we want to think about like any sort of unhappiness that you do experience because for the most of you, this is going to be a more joyful and fun kind of month than for everybody else in the Zodiac with... um this mercury retrograde energy but they're saying like in those moments like even though our baseline might be higher in those moments when our happiness threshold kind of dips a little bit we want you to think about specifically what isn't making you sad so um the thing is is like oftentimes what we think is making us angry or sad isn't what's making us angry or sad right i might get angry that somebody um i don't know what But, like, basically my point is, anytime that somebody makes you angry, you're not actually angry, you're sad. You're disappointed. Anger is a reaction to feeling sad, and feeling sad is uncomfortable, so then you're sad that you're sad, so then you lash out in anger in order to try to control it. So most of the time, a lot of things are like, oh, I'm sad that I can't control things. I'm sad that things don't go the way that I hope that they do all of the time. Things like that. So kind of, like, breaking down each thought and each feeling to what it actually is. Okay? I love you so much, and I'll see you in April. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20-minute video, Uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here.